All right, guys, today I'm here with Ornob Wasim. Ornob, how's it going, bro? How are you going? Yeah, I'm really good. How are you, Justin? Pretty good, man. Uh, we're doing this on um, Sunday afternoon, which is, I don't know, for you, if you work full time, I suppose Sunday's a time where you start freaking out about Monday. Yeah, yeah. I, I think with business, your week is has its own schedule. You, you're so, your own boss, though, so you probably don't yeah. feel that, fuck, on Sunday, oh, my God, I've got to fucking work tomorrow. If you're on, your yeah, own boss, yeah. you, you, you must feel a little bit better about you're, it. I think the weekend loses its definition. So it's like Saturday, Sunday becomes the week, kind of, because I end up working. Like, people, I, I'm a detailer, so people want to do their cars on Saturday, Sunday. Fucking earth, yeah. All, all sorts of days of the week. So, like, my weekend ends up becoming, like, Wednesday and Friday. And then I'm working like Monday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. But then some weeks you get no work. So it's like, it's just it's just scattered all over the place, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also, uh, let's talk about your detailing. We'll go straight into Ooh. it. I mean, that, that's, what we're, that's what we're going to yeah, talk yeah, about that, today. That like, topic, hey? So your business is Turnheads Car Detailing. Yes, it is. Interesting. And, uh, what, Turnheads? Yeah, no. It's, yeah, turnheads, it's, yeah. It's, it's good, um, man. It's good. I started as South Southwest. I just, it, it just, it, it's the detailing thing just started out of its own thing. Like just a love of cars, doing friends, uh, cars for friends, you know, like mates with Sylvia's and signs and like all sorts of other, uh, a lot of Jap cars are just like neglected. People don't really look at the paint, like, you know, body kits slapped on different panels from yeah. different things. And headlights, just, all, the, all the headlights are like Supras and stuff. All the headlights yeah, are going foggy, the Sauras and stuff. foggy, except for the earlier glass ones, which were really good. Mm. But then they phased out glass in the mid-90s and they had to go plastic for safe, uh, consumer safety, yeah, passenger right. safety, all that sort of stuff as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, detailing is, it's 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 a quite a weird, it's quite a, a weird industry, quite a weird field because it's like there's no governing body, there's no trade. There's no apprenticeship. There's nothing. So it's kind of just like anyone does anything. You know what how, I mean? How did you get into that? Like as a car guy, obviously some some guys get become mechanics. Some guys become race car drivers or whatever, like because they love cars. But how do you get mm. into detailing yeah. because you love cars? It's, it's weird. Like um, cars came to me when I was a kid. So I was like... Like most of like, us. Yeah, for most of us. I think it's like we all have like a weird childhood experience growing up with cars and our relationship. What, was your dad into cars no so that's where i'm like i'm like a black sheep like i kind of just like like cars from when i was a little kid like i remember like being a little boy like looking at all the badges like all holders mm. like yeah. i remember ecotech v6 badges and just like random badges you'd memorize and all those things all the model names and years. i was the same eh? like even even yeah. before you could speak well you could call out mercedes or you could call you could tell yeah, what yeah, the yeah. different makes were out different models i remember I, my parents would be like i'd be like four and like pointing out different models and be like oh wow like you know this but you don't even know how to speak like something proper you know what i mean like stuff like totally. that you know? totally. but it's, I, I think it's kind of like how a lot of car guys have like a certain sense of like autism with cars as well it's like we have we build up like this headspace around cars where we like we have such a strong imagination with cars that we all like have different relationships with it Oh man, it's it's relationships the key word. Like I think a lot of people, especially if you're in a relationship, a lot of girls don't understand yes. how obsessive you can get with cars and how much. I mean, I suppose everyone can see how much money we spend on them, though. Like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it gets to a point where, like even the guy at Macca's, like if, if someone's working at Macca's and they're putting on fake body kits and fake wheels and stuff, I fake used to pay them stuff. out. But in retrospect, like now that i'm more mature i'm like fuck each to their own right like i yeah, well, get i get that kid that's like spending yeah, every sure. fucking dollar on their car like it's fake fake space. fucking turbo scoops and whatever on their bonnet whatever yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's all fucking cool by me now because it's so it's so cars are like such a relative thing modifying cars it's like when you start it's like putting a sticker on your car it's like you know, wow like i changed totally the way yeah, like, oh, wow, totally. like, it didn't look like that from this angle. And, like, all of a sudden, you're like, looking like, oh, crap. And then you, you add, like, even, like, the tackiest thing or the wheels. Or, like The tackiest you, like, thing, like, even, like, a cup holder or whatever. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, like, no, the, the like smallest Belton, things. Like, Belton seal, you know, like, the screw-on caps that you buy. Totally. All that stuff. And then it just it's, it kind of just, like, grows from there. Like, it's like, its own organic growth. And, like, everyone has a different growth. I think some guys drop out of it when it starts to get a bit expensive. Like, oh, shit, like, I better leave this. Like, I don't know how this will affect my life. Like, the more reasonable guys and the, a lot of the more emotional guys were really emotional mm. with it. Spend mm. lots and, like, they fully delve into it and they commit to it and stuff. And, yeah, it's weird, eh? 
Oh, it's a ho- it's a hobby, bro. Like I think mm. I think you know when you when you want to find out the soul of a human being, I usually ask them like, what do you spend your money on? Because <laughs> yeah, whatever, is, whatever, whatever wherever you put all your money, it's probably what your hobby is, right? What your hobby is and what your like true passion and love is, and it's like it's that thing with money as well. Like everyone's got such a different relationship with money, and that kind of ties into cars. Because some I mean, people are just more. Yeah, what you were gonna say. Oh, I was just saying, like I, I, I was, I was always more the arty type, like an artist, and mm-hmm. then I ended up as a career. I ended up choosing graphic design because my parents were like, "Fuck, if you study art, you might not make any money. But if you, mm. if you did this new thing called graphic design, you might be able to do arty stuff but still get paid for it." You know, so yeah, but you, you came so, into that in the nineties, didn't you as well? Uh, yeah, eighties. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah mid nine, mid nineties. So, so how was it for you with like being into cars, but then like detailing's? Detailing is not easy work, man. Like I, I've had my cars detailed before, and I see how much of a sweat you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's, 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 a, really, it's a fucking workout, man. It's a workout. It's a workout like, and a half. Like I remember, like yeah. I was, I was having like lots of physicals. Like, say it's such an intense job. Say you even need every car's a different sort of job. So some cars are like lots of you know you got to do a lot of buffing and you know clay barring, paint paint correction, which is kind of like eliminating swirls and eliminating all the little defects you see in the paintwork um you know there's some jobs which are more simple some jobs which are harder but it's mm. all like you know you got to crouch get into compromising positions you, a lot of people don't have voice so it's like a lot of the really top a1 detailers who spend a lot of money on a shop and stuff will have a hoist have all the little tools you can use to like make it comfortable but when you do yeah. it kind of like you know home home style detailing it's yeah it's really intense has a lot of effect on your body it wears you out a lot so that that but itself you obviously like something... get in the zone though like it's it's yeah, something yeah. that you it's like cleaning up the house right like when you yeah it like is. i'm really fucking bad at it but when i start it i can't stop let's like mm, you mm. get in the zone so you have to get in the zone because it's like when you do this for a living and you're always like you know i think of it kind of as like mini restorations restorations of different you know grades like there's a heavy restoration or like a light one and you kind of restoring a bit of the form of glory to the car so um yeah it's kind of like whenever you get stuck into a process like that if you're, if you're not really in that process it feels it's really hard to do it because it's so consuming so yeah yeah so so how did you get into it i mean that was the, that was the question like yeah, so, yeah, so, the so so from being from super into cars as a kid like how did you get to the point where i mean is is, is it like the graphic design thing where you sort of thought well I want to have a job where at least it's got to do with my passion with cars. Is it, is it yeah, similar? Yeah. Is well, it like, similar I to... grow... you, you probably have like, oh, like, I, I don't know it's, if it's a generic thing to say, like Asian parents kind of like, they more so forced you to go on the academic, more practical. Path. Oh yeah, sure. So I, I, was, sure. I had that whole raising where I had to like study. I went to like selective school, did uni. I, yeah, uni I saw, I saw your, I saw your profile, man. Like I saw, yeah, yeah. I saw your profile. You, you used to be like, well you studied wealth management you're yeah, a porn broker like, like super I, annu- superannuations so, yeah, so, so commonwealth bank and like i did all these other fields that were so different and it's like yeah like i did detailing in the back so i started detailing back in 2013 2014 okay um, back then it was like a lot more expensive to detail your car to do a proper mm. detail it wasn't like you know nowadays you go on facebook marketplaces like detailers advertising everywhere now so it's kind of like become yeah. a hobby that's become more mainstream kind of yeah, kind of yeah. youtube google um I, I think a lot of detailing companies have realized they can you know make money like selling easier buffers and stuff like that because before you'd have to go super cheap buy a really hardcore buffer that was hard to use and you'd have to try to use it and burn the paint on your car and then you'd, fu- the you'd buff- fuck it basically like it, it, it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I remember my first car i i, I went into something like that, like an auto one or a super cheap auto. Yeah, and I bought like the detailing kit and I totally mm. fucked up my car. Like, yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's really easy to, cause it's kind of like, you gotta, you gotta kind of know what you're doing. Like whenever you're buffing a car, every car's got a different paint. It's got a different history. Like you don't know yeah. if your car was stored under a tree. So they'd have lots of tree sap, tree contamination yeah. build up on paint. So if you try to buff that, it's so sticky, the pad will like, you know, stuff up. Anything. But there's all these variables that people don't realize that you have to learn when you do detailing. And that's mm. what gives you that actual good result. So I kind of got started into it from my own passion. Like I just had, it, I was always kind of nerdy about cars, reading different things. Like I kind of expanded on that childhood thing and just kept reading on about cars, magazines, articles. Um, obviously looking after cars kind of came into like that passion for cars. Like I want to make my car look really good. 
So, so I just you always like, with your first cars and stuff, you always yeah. kept them clean. Yeah, I'd always like I'd be the sort of guy who'd like wash my car before I drive. Like that sort of stuff. So <laughs> yeah, it was really like, like, my, car, my, car, my car was like my clothes, like you know, and like you got to wash your clothes before you go out. You know, it's kind of that sort of mind headspace. Like when you were, when I was yeah. younger. So I, I've never had you. a I've never had a garage. Like I've never had a a garage to put my car into. So. I was never that guy because, like, I'd wash my car and the next day it'd be dirty. Stuff. Again. But yeah, I, 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 out, outdoor or like you know carports, but never. Yeah, carports. I've never had a proper garage. Hmm. So, well, it's kind of like I've had that curse where I feel like whenever I wash a car, it starts raining. I literally, yeah. I remember I washed a car and like it literally a drop of rain dropped out of the sky as I as I wiped the last streak. I was like, oh wow, like that's just. That's like meant to be at that point or something like that. But um, do, yeah, do, do you like, know when you're going through like you get your car washed? I, I mean, I, I understand that pain because like I've had my car detailed a few times, but you're going to the car show, you're going to the end of month meet or something, and mm. you're going under the M5 and it dri- just drips fucking it drips, water on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like fuck, you yeah, just know yeah. it's already fucked it. And it just it just wrecks that finish and stuff. But but it, that's what I mean. It's such a like detailing, such a relative thing because like. One finish, like it's one man's definition of a good finish is not another man's definition. So, like what I see in paint, another another guy doesn't see. So it's like yeah. it's such a relative thing. So it's really hard to like know what the market is, who wants what, what cars are, cheap, are capable of what, because everything's got such different histories and stuff to it as well. So yeah, but um, I think you asked yeah, as you asked me about starting how I started. Yeah, mm. yeah, it just kind of like I used to wash my own cars and I do it for friends and I just bought a buffer and I tried stuff out and I researched stuff on Google and back when I got into it six, seven years ago, it was a bit more confusing. Like you had to filter through more archives or stuff on Google. Like there's a site called Auto Geek and there's some other like um, major US detailing sites which give you lots of how-tos and stuff. And There wasn't like, much new tech back then. Hey, yeah, it was more and, old school. Yeah, like, it wasn't as, it was more old school, but it was just yeah. like, it wasn't as mainstream. So when it's, when something's not as mainstream as, and there's not as much money in it, it's harder to find the information. It's harder to get into it. And you got to like, just kind of like, you got to um, just do it. You got to do it and learn as you make mistakes. And that's just. I, uh, I remembered AutoGlim, that product was probably the, the beginning Glim. of like, okay, detailing is getting serious like auto yeah, yeah. was like the the first sort of product that looked like more like um fucking fashion it, fashion, it, it, lo- yeah, yeah. it looked more like a fucking perfume or something it looked yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it had a bit it of graphic had design it had like it's got uh, that like yeah. design theme to that product which it's yeah. uniform amongst all the products but yeah i think so like next- Ma- maguire's were the first to sort of maybe introduce interesting scents i remember washing my car with Meguiar's products, they smell nice, everything smells good. But I think mm. the Auto Glim was like the first time I saw something that was like graphically minimalist and expensive and expensive desirable. And, it was, yeah, like, yeah. was kind of like, oh, fuck, if I've got a Euro car, it's worth it to, to pay extra for Buy the Auto Glim. Auto Glim kind of like, I think I remember it started out as, that's what Aston Martin and some of the UK Manufactured OEM manufacturers use in their factory to detail their cars, and it started yeah. from there. And then they kind of decided, oh, maybe we can get more of a market selling it. I think it used to be sold in the UK only, and then it slowly made its way around, and that's where I it's. Mean, I remember uh, years ago, I met a guy, um, David True, who runs. David True. He used to, yeah, he used to run uh, run uh, Reflect Effect, and now it's called um, Protect Protect Auto. Mm. He's out. He's out in Clyde. So he used to detail my my um, skyline. But then, wh- yeah, when I when I bought um, a couple of golfs, he started detailing the golfs, and I introduced him initially to JDMST forums, and he yeah. didn't do too well. Like he got some clients, but he didn't yeah. do too well. But when mm. I started running the uh, Euro style tuning forums and the VW golf forums, he just went next level because. It, it seemed like at the time, like, correct me if I'm wrong, if it's different today, but back then it seemed like the JDM guys didn't have the money for detailing. Whereas yeah, as, yeah, soon yeah. As, as soon as he hopped on the Euro forums, he was like, Justin, thank you so much because it opened him up to doing so much more business, man, with Euro yeah, cars. Well, like, well, well, it, good good on you for helping him out too because that, that's another thing with detailing. It's like, you, it kind of needs like a guy, you kind of always need to hook up with a guy who has a, something in the car community or like a group or a forum board or something like that, that opens up a lot of opportunities and that makes it 
brings oh, out a word, word of mouth. You mean? Yeah. It's yeah, just, word of mouth and awareness. Because yeah. I think a lot of people just don't even know about detailing or don't know what it can do for their car. So that's why there's like a lack of interest in it as well, in a general sense. Yeah. Well, I I don't know. I just do you find the same thing now? Like, um, he seemed to just fucking take off after that man like he 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 went from doing the cars himself to getting staff and then yeah, he and then, was mobile before he used to come to you now he yeah. you know, a shop and like he, he's just gone off and now now he does everything but mm. it, it seemed like the euro market was what made him m- more money and, and more money was, yeah yeah i mean do you find the same thing like with I'll, I'll you, versus yeah, Euro? euro? Um, my my experience with it is like Euro cars always you, you, I think you have this experience build quality is better it's like a different it's like a step up from a Jap car Euro car so even though I find with the paintwork it's kind of like the paintwork is different it's on, it's on a different level a lot of the Euro cars it's thicker it feels more plush what about the used. owners though do you find the owners are more willing to spend money yeah, yeah. On... Like, I feel like no I feel like just because that car has that high quality character people mm. feel like they've got to look after the car more so like that's why Euro cars tend to like have the owners that look up. Yeah, and that is true. Like you do get guys with golf, um, even like Passats yeah. and like just all a lot of Euro cars do even get if they're not cars. even if they're not exotic, right? Like they're, they're mm. still like the guy with a golf. Like a golf is like a fucking Civic. There's the same fucking thing, but you're still gonna find the golf guy is gonna spend more money on his paint than a Civic guy, right? A Civic guy, yes, of course. Yeah, even and though it's, it's like uh, a, it's still a hatchback, it's just a hatchback, but fuck, like they they tend to want their cars to look super clean and they're super clean they, 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 like maybe they know about swirl marks maybe they know mm. a little bit more about detailing but that's where like i had a different approach to detailing because like i remember i realized that when i started back then it was like more euro cars more of the high-end market that wanted detailing so i kind of started turner's detailing it was more oriented towards the more mainstream like i wanted to like appeal to more enthusiasts jap cars that's cool yeah, do you, so you, like, you back, like Jap cars then, yourself? Yeah, yeah, I'm a massive Jap car guy. Like, so like you, I, I've got a, I had a 32 GDR. I've got a 33 GDR. At the moment. Oh, it's nice. Just, yeah, I've got a, got a, got a few cars, but they're kind of all in project status. So you know, all, <laughs> money, all money various, pits, bro. <laughs> money pits, various states of doors that not really giving me back anything in my life and make me contemplate everything. But um, yeah, like I started that. I started out because I did notice that whatever what the, the thing you're saying about like Jap cars. I used to go to like car meets i remember i went to like jdmst end of month meets back in 2015 yeah. 2014 2013 mm-hmm. and like cars were just like it looked good in photos but then you see them in real life and all the paint would just be faded and like oh, shocking bro yeah you see like nice 34 gdrs with just like swirls and like just hammered and just like, i'd say i'd say 90 95 of the cars at end of month meet would have swirl marks yeah 100 and, and it's it, it was, I, no. I found it disappointing because i just knew that what the cars would do and i was like oh i just i have a love for cars so i just like seeing cars look good so it kind of like my passion and the business kind of just started from something that innocent like it was just like I wanted to make more JDM cars look good on the road. So just like I have like a strong love for those cars. It was like I just felt like they were all neglected. So I kind of like I started like, and as as with any business, you've got to kind of start cheaper. Like you can't start, you know, um, charging as much as all the big guys do and expect to make it. You got to kind of start from lower end and like make your make your like name in the industry and make it's your word, it's word of mouth, like you said, word right? Like if you, you know, dues, kind of like you know, like show yeah. that you're worth the money. So yeah. I kind of started, like, I remember I'd do, like, full details on, like, a 32 or 33 for, like, 150 bucks, $200. dollars i would be there for, like, five, six hours, buffing the car, clay barring it, making it nice again, and, like, doing basically what I would have charged nowadays, $600, dollars mm. Albeit, I wasn't, I wasn't like, as, as experienced, but, like, I was still doing a really big job and trying so that, to change that, it. That's still a lot of money for the average. Like, for someone who's working at Macca's and has, like, my, my first ever detail experience was probably in the uh, early 90s. Like, my first Ooh. car. My first car ever, so I was, like, 18, 19 years old. I had a, a shitbox Toyota Celica, and it was fucked, man. You know when a car's parked in the sun all the time? Yeah, yeah. And the, it, it, the paint's gone, man. It's gone. gone. Yeah, it it, it gone. was so matte. There was I couldn't even see a reflection in it, right? <laughs> and and I, so I, I, I went to the Yellow Pages. That's how early it was. No internet. Yeah, back in the days. I, I, I went to the Yellow Pages and I typed in like um, 
Uh, I, I didn't type anything and I fucking flicked the pages and I found like a detailer that was like, had the same area code as me. You know, we used to have area codes and all that. Area fucking, codes like, and there stuff there was no good. nine before the number, right? It was like yeah. the first three digits. It wasn't four digits. And um, yeah, wow. and, I, and, I, and I called this guy, these two guys and they came over, the two Asian dudes and they like had all the fucking machines. Yeah, they were buffing everything and stuff. And in the end, it's it, it's like polishing a turd, man. It's like when it's too <laughs> far gone, like it, it, it didn't fix it. You know, it didn't, it didn't make it like mirror reflection because the paint was gone. So hmm. what, what I think, used to I think a lot of, ah, oh, man, it was the flip, flip, pop-up headlights, Carlos Saints. Like the mid-80s, sort of early uh, 80s. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It um, was just when they started getting around. But, but I think like a lot of, like my first experience then was like paying a whole lot of money that I, I fucking worked at Woolies like, at so it was like every night I was packing shelves and it was like handed over 600 bucks or something. It was fucking good. Oh, wow. So wow. I think, yeah. I, I think, I think a lot of um, people, their first time experience with it might be at, 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 at your detriment in, in that, like they mm. feel like they've been ripped off. Like when you buy a first car, they, they fucking try to get you on the paint protection and paint all protection this shit. And, and you know, it's going to be fucked. Like, Every time I take someone to buy a new car now, I'm like, don't fucking do that. I'll take you don't to the that. detailer instead. I'll take you to Ornob. I'll take you to Dave. Like, they, the, <laughs> you guys will do a way better job at cheaper as well than what the car, mm. the Steelers will charge you, right? So, so how, how has that affected your business in that, like, there's people out there that are, it's just like a mechanics, man. There's, there's people out there that rip people off and then there's people that do a good job. So do you, do you find like a lot of people, their first experiences maybe with car detailing is either they've gone out and bought expensive products and fucked up their cars themselves and they come to you to fix it or they've gone and got ripped off by somebody else? Like, does that even happen? Yeah, it's, it's weird, eh? Like, um, there's just, as I said, now, especially now in like 2020, I felt like, especially after COVID, I think a lot of people tried to pick up detailing. A lot of people who lost jobs and stuff like that who, who were quite into cars because I kind of noticed a lot of people were like advertising on Marketplace with really cheap prices and just lots yeah, of yeah, random yeah. ads for detailing. Just lots. I just noticed lots. And like I even noticed that like just people were telling me that they were getting other quotes that were like way cheaper. Like it was like – It's sounded like, it's just sound like someone who would have just picked up a – like, you know, it is kind of just like human – basic human psychology. So if you work on Mac and then you make 15 bucks an hour, it's kind of like, oh, would you rather just like do a job which is probably harder, but you'll make a bit more money and you can have your own, you can be your own boss and stuff like that. So I can see how it kind of like you start off in that way. Where it's kind you of can't like, stop you them. Wanna... Yeah, you, can't no, but you, can't, you can't stop them. Well, that's everything. But how, how, do, how does it affect you though? Like how, how I mean, like how does it mean you have to um, be more aggressive on your social media and say like, yeah, do you have to get to a point where you just say, watch out for people who, who are charging think... like fucking hundred bucks for the hundred I mean, bucks and stuff like that. I think with any business, I think if I, I you, you probably know quite a few business owners. I think with any business there's a lot of hustle that you don't see to it. A lot of you know chasing customers, putting yourself out there, advertising yourself and stuff like that. But I, I even you bringing that brings it to a really personal point for me because even just a few weeks ago I had a whole like breakdown because I was just like, oh like you work so hard in this industry and like because everyone's bringing the price down and it's so competitive now. You kind of feel like you're getting ripped off when you do the job now. So I, but it's, I it's the same with every profession, don't you find? Like it is, it is. There's people doing logo design for like five bucks on Fiverr, five man. Five bucks, and I, yeah. I, I try to charge them three grand. They're like, get the fuck off. I thought the Justin and I only had like, I'm like, what was your budget? They're like, oh, 50 bucks. I'm like, get fucked. Like 50 yeah, bucks. That's it. It's this happens to me. 50 all bucks time. is not going to pay for Maccas for two people. That's man. it. That's it. Like I, I get people who come to me and I'm like. They're asking basically. They they send me a photo of like a, a wrecked car. They're like, oh, like you know, uh, one one night they just decided they're like, oh yeah, you know, I, I might as well fix this car tonight or something like. And they take a photo of it and send it to me. Like, I want to fix it. I'm like, I'm like, what's your budget? And they're like, you know, two hundred bucks. bucks. I'm like, oh, two hundred bucks. Yeah. Probably gonna take me like a week. It, I'll probably have to charge you at least a thousand or fifteen hundred to cover my labor and all my time. All Do you the get problems. threats? Do you get threats? Yeah. Like if you, I, I, I get, this, get that sometimes, you know, you jump off a bridge, bro, or whatever, like. Yeah, you get people like, I remember like, I've had, I've done jobs where I feel like, I've done a job where I've done a really good job on a car. I know that I've done a really good job. The guy's come mm. to pick it up. I've showed him the car. It's excellent. The car looks awesome. The guy mm. goes home. Maybe he gets a bill or he gets, you know, decides he wants to spend the money on something else. 
I was starting to change his mind and start threatening him that, oh, you know, I want my money back. I'm not happy with the job. Oh, you just fuck. Get, yeah, you know, you get, you get really weird stuff like that, which makes no sense. Because it's with... usually their age group too, right? Like that he was probably a younger guy? Younger guy? No, I've got an older guy. I've got guys in their 40s who do that. I've got oh, guys like, I've got a, yeah, you get young guys who are like really mature. Like, you know, that's another part of the business. Like when you do stuff and you interact with, like I interact with a lot of different sorts of like car guys and stuff like that. And you meet like young guys who are really mature. You kind of have their head together and then you kind of meet old guys you can you can tell who have never kind of grown up and they're kind of still <laughs> like a young guy. Yeah. You know, they still have that like teenage mentality and they, but they're, they're like 50 or something like that. But like, so you look at them and you think, oh, fuck, this guy's probably an older guy. But then you speak to him and he does stuff and you're like, oh, wow. Like, you know, that's the reality. It's just the reality of humanity. It's just everyone's so different. So, you know, you can't really predict what someone's going to be like from the way they look or the car they drive, you know, stuff like that. Oh man, that's tough, bro. But um, so you you did um some work on Hawkins' um car, and that's really weird because you're detailing yeah. fucking vinyl, right? Yeah, vinyl. So yeah. what the fuck? What the fuck? I fucking yeah, but per- personally, I fucking hate realize. vinyl, man. Like I hate it because it's not real. I'm a realist, and it's like paint is paint, but like vinyl is like it's fake. It's, it, oh, yeah, it, 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 you know, and so it's oh, yeah, it is. And, and, and it's like, I know if a bird shits on it, like, and you don't fucking clean the shit up, it'll fuck up the plastic. So I understand that if you, if you spend all that money on a fucking vinyl wrap job, then you want to look after it because look like, after, yeah. I, I get it. But it's like, like, uh, no, no offense to whoever did the wrap job. But as soon as I saw Hawkins car at end of month mate, like I saw it, I saw it for a split second and I went, I saw a bumper bar and I saw a little bubble. I just saw yeah. a bubble and I just went, Fuck! Is that fucking wrapped? And, yeah, I, and yeah, I touched yeah. it, and I touched it, and I like, and like, oh my god, it's wrapped. So it's funny that like it only took me a, a, a second to find it. But when I used to work at Zen Garage, we we had some detailer, uh, so, so rappers next door, rappers, and and I could tell what was hard for them. It was like the fucking tight round corners around the uh, bonnet and around the uh, fucking edges that were really sharp and tight. And so I knew where to look to see if it was a wrap job or not just because I could see where, where it was hard for them. So, but in this situation, I didn't even fucking look. Like, I just went, oh, fuck, that looks like a rap job. And turns out it was. But mm. um, what's the go with, like, detailing? Like, man, there's beautiful paint under that car, <laughs> under that wrap, you know? But, like, you're detailing fucking vinyl now. Like, what the fuck? Like, how do you, how do you even keep up with this shit? It's like, you must have a, you must have a, preference to work on paint because it's more malleable as yeah, an artist yeah, yeah. Well, as so, an artist you find probably there's more science in in working on paint than there paint, is yeah. working on fucking plastic at, at, at like at a very basic level when you're detailing so say when you're buffing something you're basically like sanding it with like so say say you got that but you got a buffer which is a machine which spins a pad the pad is probably always made of like a different material foam. Nowadays, you even got microfiber pads. So like they literally got microfiber lined pads with foam in between the buffer and the pad. So you're buffing you vinyl. Yeah, you got your, but like, I mean, like in the sense that when you're buffing, when you're buffing anything, paint, vinyl, you're basically refining the surface. So at a very microscopic level, you just, you know, like, you know, say how you sand metal and if you sand it with finer and finer sandpaper, you get, you make the yeah, metal yeah, yeah. more and more shiny. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like that, but... At, but isn't the at, vinyl like, so thin? Like, isn't the vinyl so thin that you, you have less uh, margin for error? Mar- yeah, there's less margin for error, but with vinyl, you you take a different approach to it. So with vinyl, you're not correcting it per se, so you're not taking swirls out, you're not taking scratches out. So you use a pad which is softer, you use, like, a, a lighter polish. Um, like, this, this, that's what I mean. There's, like, a different approach to it. So with, even with paint, you... That that's the thing that a lot of people stuff up. They kind of like will buy like a buffing machine and use the most intense harsh, pad, harsh shit, and harsh just fuck it up. But there's yeah. when you're actually when you're actually detailing, you research into it. There's grades of pads, so you can get yeah. really soft yeah. pads which absorb the vibration. You can get softer polishes which which are mixed with more oils and fats, which don't break down into the paint as much. So when you say when you're buffing bottle, all you kind of want to do is give it that little icing on the cake. You kind of want to make yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. a little less fun. So you kind of use a soft pad, a soft polish, you buff the whole thing, you get a bit more gloss out of it. And then when you put a coating on, say like, so all that stuff you see, ceramic coating, dealership paper texture, coatings are basically like a really 
thin layer of like glass around your paint. So say you you, you measure paint in microns. So the clear coat on your on your car is like you know when you're in school you play with cellophane, mm -hmm. like the cellophane stuff you wrap, you know, wrapping paper. So like paper. Thickness. I get you. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the thing thicker paint is. So that they'd measure that as say sixty microns. So when you're putting a coating on, you're putting on like one micron. So it's literally like a, a little fraction of what your actual clear coat is. So you're actually just putting on like a sacrificial layer. Like you're putting a layer on top of that substantial layer of paint to act as some, like just as a buffer. So say if bird shit dropped on your car, it it eat that away instead of eating away on your paint. Fucking hell, man. Like I, I think the, the vinyl craze is dying down at least a little bit. Like I, I remember when 2010, 11, 12, it just... It blew up so hard that every motherfucker was wrapping their cars. Like, wrapping their cars and shit like that. Especially guys with like Lambos and Lambos, you know, you know, Bentley's guys old. who got the money, like, oh, chuck thousands at this thing, fucking wrap it like some crazy color or whatever. Crazy pink chrome, gold chrome. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah. I, I think like at that time it was going off, but um Yeah, like, it, but, like you, you said, on, on Andrew Hawkins Supra, like as soon as I walked in, I did the same thing. I looked at the front bar. And I looked at the corner of the headlights and I saw a bubble. Yeah. I saw a crease and I was like, yeah, I knew straight away. And even with the rap, like you look like, at no, it. No offense. No offense to the rap guys. I'm sure oh, they were under a deadline really or whatever. Job. And maybe they were doing it for free for like promo. I don't know. I don't know. But it's just like, mm. you know, rap is rap, right? Like it, you can't make it perfect. Like it's, it, it's not paint. It's not paint. It's not paint. It's vinyl. Um, yeah. There's some, the main manufacturers of this 3M Avery, they've got different grades of rap. So you can get you can get wraps which are thicker, thinner, more resistant to heat, less resistant to heat. But fundamentally, like I don't know if you've ever looked at a wrap car, like you've probably seen quite a few in real life. I've you can see lot, you man. can see in real yeah. life it just doesn't look like paint. Like no. the way it's yeah, yeah, no. especially the carbon, man. Like when when we were doing stuff for 3M at Zen and people were like, carbon wrap this, carbon wrap that. I'm like, no oh, man, like yeah. You, you know, real carbon is about making your bonnet lightweight, not carbon wrapping your bonnet to make it look like lightweight like i'm always the guy that's like pushing the real shit you know like yeah the, like like you, you take you, you take 100 kilos out of your car it's gonna feel different like 100 percent for sure you know, i'm the so. sort of guy who kind of like gets sad when i have a passenger in a car because i know they just want to add weight to <laughs> especially <laughs> especially back in the day when we had like civics with b16s yeah, man like, it's like it. fuck if, if you had a if you have a big aussie made in the car next to you big like car. fuck I'm this like sad. I'm like, oh man, I'm not gonna feel the beat take as much anymore and stuff. Like it's, it's all that sort of little, the little autism factors and stuff like that that you realize. I love it, bro. So how yeah. how did you hook up with Hawkins? Um, I did a podcast with him recently and people loved it. It was it was cool, you know. Yeah, like it was good. I watched that... it. I watched it. It was really good. Oh, you, man, guys, man. you guys touched on some good topics. Oh, it's just someone that I've known. He's someone that I've known throughout the years and. We've been in different circles, but if you step outside of yourself, sometimes you realize, hey, fuck, you're both into cars. You're both into GTRs. Like, fuck, you know, a, a lot, you, a lot might of as, you might as well get along, right? Mm. You might as well get yeah, along. Like, I, you know, I think sometimes you get so involved, like you guys, you probably hate certain detailers and all that stuff. But if you, if you take that little step back, you realize, hey, we're all, we're all in this together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So, it is. It is like that. It's kind of like so, it's kind of like I feel like in cars, there's a lot of ego battles. So like a lot of oh, men. Fucking oath, right? Yeah. Was it was the car such uh in this paradigm? It's such a like ego extension. So it's like so many guys use their cars like their alternative identity. Dude, so, like, every hobby, know? man. I, with the gamers that I play with, there, there's ego. Uh, everything. Yeah, I, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 Hundred yeah. percent. Um, and that's just that's just part of like I think that's part of any yeah as you said as, it's part of any hobby so it's kind of like you, there's some guys it, yeah some guys take it more seriously flex more than others and some don't and um yeah as you say like it's kind of like just take a step back like even if i'm a detailer there's probably another detailer and we both compete with each other but we're both doing the same thing we both probably have yeah. the same intent at the end of the day so and pr both probably have the same passion there's no, but, is there a community? Is there a community around detailing or is it, is it more fierce yeah, and uh, fucking nasty? Yeah, I think it's more not like I've, I've had bad experiences with competing detailers and like people leaving bad reviews and yeah. So there's yeah, no I community. Think, really. It doesn't feel like anyone would, would kind of want to help you out or like that sort of thing, but I don't know. Cause it's kind of like different. Like when you, when you run a business, you don't have a lot of time as well to like 
kind of got like, you know, I can't really detail a car with another guy who's a detailer because he's probably got his own brand. I've got my own brand. And we, yeah, it's just weird. Like it's kind it's of those sad though. Weird. It's sad though. It's, it's sad. like, it's, it's fucking, sad. you know, cause you, you, obviously it's related to your passion, but then it's like the people that are most like you are probably your competitors, but it's like, if, if everyone, if everyone could just chill the fuck out and just help each other, it'd probably be help each other out, yeah. way cooler, but way yeah, cooler. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's the thing in the car scene nowadays as well, isn't it? It's kind of, you kind of feel like even, even just on Facebook and stuff, like you go on and it's like, there's so much toxicity. Like there's so much oh, like fucking no, no, no. But there's so much like people just thinking that you got to build a car to the way they want it built. And, right. If like, they don't like it, they're so quick to tell you. Yeah, and, but then they, then they got to say something that's negative, and like it's just this like negative tone to the whole thing, and then you feel this negative vibe from someone else, and then you probably give it to someone else, and you guys kind of goes along in like a train of negativity, kind of. So like. And it's I'm different noticing, age like, groups too, man. It's different, different, like you said, different. It maybe not age groups, but like different, like maturity. mental states, right? Yeah, maturity state, level. Yes. So, it how is, did you meet? Is. How did you meet Hawkins and and doing the work on his car? Has it helped mm. your business? Do you think? Love of yeah, same as you, love of GDR. So I had a thirty two GDR, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. similar to your one. I remember I used to idolize your thirty two GDR when I had one because I used to love the C twenty eight and the whole look, the, just the clean jap look you had going on. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so I went to like a Shannon's, there's a Shannon's R32 GDR meet, mm-hmm. I think last year or the year before, and um, I saw him there and I kind of went up to him and I remember he made this whole series with his 32 on YouTube where he advertised lots of mods and did lots of like little feature pieces on his 32 and I really liked his 32 and he had it there at the meet. So I kind of offered to do his 32. I was like, I'll okay. detail your whole 32, make it look really nice for YouTube. So it looks like a really nice car. And I kind of always got sad when I looked at it because it looked. He, he, he didn't have one? He didn't have a, he didn't have a detail already? No, I, I, like, I think he did, but he just didn't care about that aspect of the car. Like he wasn't right. as familiar with detail. Like he's more of a mechanical racing yeah. suspension sort of guy. So I, I kind of like offered him that. And then what ended up happening was that the car got redone anyway. So he did, oh, it was planning to get redone. So he didn't want to do it back then. So, cause he just thought it'd be a waste of time. So I kind of just kept in the loop with him. And then I know that he's always got projects and cars going on. So I yeah, yeah. asked him here and there, you know, can I do this and that? And kind of went from there. And then I did, I washed a few cars at a Mighty Car Mods meet for yep. him and the boys, uh, you know, Marty and Moog did that. And then he went from there. Then he messaged me for the Super one day and I was like, oh, why not give it a go? Yeah, just kind of just went with it and, Went, went with it as it went along. I mean, do, do you see, like, I mean, for other people who are out there who are professionals, but then, like, you know, all professionals have to meet people halfway sometimes, right? Sometimes you've got to go, okay, well, this is an opportunity for me to get yeah, out yeah. in front of more people or whatever. Like, do you, do you find, like, um, in doing that work for him, for that Supra, and I can see, like, you're using that, that orange, like it's fucking bright car, right? So you're using yeah, it in car. your socials and stuff, right? So mm. do you find that that has benefited you in like legitimate exact Isn't transactions it? of here's some money that's come in because of that or oh, like, have... it, it, it's a tough call, you know, like I get sent yeah, yeah. fucking t-shirts and shit. And if I, I don't know if I'm fucking helping them sell more t-shirts, like, I don't know, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know. That's, that's the thing with marketing is such a weird, it's, it's marketing is like, it's like its own organism. So like, I think you know this, like you're, you're, you're a marketer. You're a marketer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a marketing person myself. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, you know how, that's like, why I'm asking you, I'm curious. Something, like, has... so something you, you create can take up its own life and then become its own organism and do its own thing. So it's kind of like, even my business is just its own thing. And it's like, it's like an entity alongside me and I like identify with it and I build it up kind of as myself. Um, so kind of like, yeah, yeah, like that marketing, it, it has helped, but I don't think I haven't felt it directly help because I already right. had, it's not like I didn't have business anyway. Like I was, I was already doing quite a lot of work, but yeah, even as we were talking about before, detailing is, it's really like, you really got to hustle for, for yeah. work. It's, yeah. it's a luxury, it's a niche, people don't need it. People will kind of like make an appointment with you and then bills will come up and they'll cancel. So it's, like like a, it's, a, it's a calculated risk. It's like, this it is, is not going to hurt risk. me. It's not going to hurt me. So I might as well fucking do it. And yeah. you, you, yeah, never you never know. You never know. It could, yeah. it could be, th- yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's just, it's, and that's just the way, like, I've just experienced that. Like, just so many people who will be like, they'll come to you and they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, like five months from now, I'm going to be close by to you in your area. And I've always seen your work and I wanted to get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not I like that. that a lot like, too, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 you get that sort of stuff. And then all of a sudden, like, I'm, you know, a week before, they're like, oh, no, nah, I'm not going to make it up then. Like, they've lost all interest in that time. 
and stuff. It's, 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 it's such an emotional thing, the Italian. Like, it's kind of like, I want my car to look good. But, like, you also know that when you make it look good, it's going to get, you know, worn down and, like, sort of rain, blah, 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 and all this stuff happens to it. So, yeah, it's a really personal thing. Like, some people really have to be Italian car. So they do it anyway, like regardless mm. of the weather, regardless of what the conditions are, whereas some people will do it as a luxury and only do it on that sort of like auto it, It's a really tough call, man. Like when, when I was a graphic designer, I, I really wanted to give back, you know, and started to do some charity, charity work, you know, charity websites and stuff. And then mm. next thing you know, when you do one or two charity websites, you, your fucking inbox is full of people that want free work. Yeah, yeah, that's like, it. it's just what happens and then and same thing with photography like i shoot a few people that are tfp tfp is like trade for print so you know you're not paying the model and she's not paying you so but then like when you're sitting there editing like fucking pimples and bruises and shit for hours on a free shoot it's like fuck you know wow like, yeah like ne- next, what am I next thing you know what am i doing it's like i'm spending yeah, what am I fucking doing? Exactly. hours here and so it, it, it's it's a tough call like i think sometimes it gets to a point where you need to draw a line in the sand, but it's like, you know, there are opportunities, obviously, sometimes where exposure is a good thing. So, yeah, yeah um, it, it's kind of like um, I say with any business, you got to kind of know what you want. Like, you got to kind of know how much business you want, how much money you want to make, what life you want to live, because you can't just go into it just airy fairy, like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to do whatever. Because, like, you, then you just end up wherever as well. So, like, with marketing, like, I, I know a lot of people who spend, so much money on google facebook and stuff sure. like that like they sure. they actually like funnel quite a lot of like because when you're in a business you don't act at the end of the day you don't make like profit isn't a massive portion of like it depends on the business obviously right, like right. if you're if you're doing corporate you're doing construction you're gonna make a lot of money but um you know like you gotta do you, do you spend any money at all though like do you do you believe in that saying you got to spend money to make money I used to. I used to spend money on. Like, you were talking about the Twitter Hawkins the other day, about like social media, the, the algorithms on YouTube and stuff like that. I felt like back in the days, back in 2013, 14, 15, even, like you could advertise and spend a bit and you'd get a lot back for it. Like, if you're have smart you, about do it. You, do you, do you, have you tried like a Facebook boost and to yeah, see I've, whether I've, you get I've the money back? Like, on Facebook boosts here and there, like Instagram boosts. I haven't spent Didn't... a lot, maybe like five, $10. Didn't like, make you any money straight away. Well, it, it, it would like you get a few followers and stuff, but it's, I like I've never been the sort of person who's really gone into all the statistics and analyze like, am I getting this from that? Because I feel like it's it's really hard to add, like you can't really analyze the sort of response you get because it changes all the time with business. Like, I don't know that my experience with with business has been like that. I feel like when you overanalyze it, because I come from a background of business, marketing, finance, accounting, yeah, and I feel yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, a lot yeah. of those. A lot of people just they overanalyze to the point of paralysis. Like it makes you expect certain things, and you get like placebo effects from the stuff you end up realizing from it. So, but that's that's my perspective. So I'm a bit more like I have my own perspective, and I follow what I think. Well, it's interesting because you come from a more corporate background, but you're yeah. see, you seem to be doing it now more like super old school, which is like word yeah, of man. mouth and just fucking, you know, you you love what you're doing, and you're not in that corporate world anymore. You're happy. You're happier. By yeah, the sounds happy, of it, happy, then, yeah. then, then happy, happy is a related thing, as you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but it, yeah. You, you know, like I know, I know, I know when I was ever in a full time job, like you're working so hard that you can't even spend the money you're earning because you're just working so fucking hard. And, well, and, and like the consistency of having a full time job is nice because you've got all this money to spend, but then you yeah, have yeah. no time to enjoy it. So, Security. Yeah, yeah. So, like, like that I, peace of mind that you know that you're gonna to go to work and you're gonna get that money, and you know that you're gonna get that two months from now as well. Whereas when you're you, business, you, but you can't spend it though. So it's like kind of like I just remember when I was working full time, like fuck, I'd look at my bank account and like fuck, there's so much money in there. But there I, right? I, I, I wasn't into anything because I I had to work so much. So it's a tough call. So I mean, are you are you doing all right? Like you're doing yeah. all right with. I'm doing all right. Like, I, and I'll go back to what you were saying, even just about like how you're doing free photo shoots and stuff. Mm, yeah. yeah, like, I've, I, like, even with detailing, I've, I've been that sort of person. I've, I've made more money. I've like consistently made more money on jobs, and then you kind of feel like the market drops or like demand drops. So then you've got to readjust all your prices, and like to get more business, you'll end up doing like prices that you were doing a few years ago, just to yeah, pull right. in more customers and stuff like that. So you're always changing when you're in business. So like, sometimes you make more, sometimes you make less. So you, and like that. Real, like so it's kind of like it's you're always changing your income level so i'll be like going from being a relatively well-off person to being less well-off 
we, you know, and like, you know, and then, you know, doing good and then doing medium all in the space of like a few months, you know what I mean? It's always changing. So, um, do, do you that, have future plans? Like, do you, cause I remember when I was, um, in graphic design, my whole dream was to sell my business. Like I think, um, my parents had a fashion store and she sold the business and, it, it, it was like almost like in the eighties and nineties, you, you knew that if you could sell your business, you could make a lot of money. A lot of money. Know? And so my sort of goal growing up was to sell my business. But then when um, a huge PR company approached me to buy my business, they said, how much, how much for your business? I said a million dollars, man. I said, I, I said, oh, this wow. is like, this was like <laughs> uh, 2000 and uh, 2001 or two. I was like 20, 21 or something. So I was like, yeah, I want a million bucks. And they were like, mm, it wasn't that far off. But then mm. they said to me, well, you need to stay on for like, we need to sign a contract where you stay on for five years because, you know, you're the business, Justin. And I just realized then that I fucked up because I created a business where I'm the graphic designer here and I, I created this and I didn't want to be in it anymore. I just wanted to sell it and make the million dollars, you know? Mm, so, so, so do, 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 you, do you think about that? It's because it's like... Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, you have those, you're, you're, you're obviously the business. Like, it's obvious yeah, that the you so are like, oh, yeah. the fucking business and yeah, you I'm are the, the guy myself. who knows. So you can't just go and fucking hire somebody else and then sell it. It's like... That's that's the conflict I keep having because it's kind of uh, like... Do you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm at that point where and even for the past few years I've had it where it's kind of like I don't want to overly implicate myself into it. Like, I don't want to like stay in it forever so i don't want to like yeah, yeah, yeah. open a shop and employ someone and have someone rely on me for the income and i'm responsible for them and then like you know you got to because it's detailing it's like it's an art it's like right but, and you're the yeah, artist it's, an art, it's, it's it. an art but it's like it's not just an art it's like it's a skill so it's like it's a refined yeah. skill so you, you get yeah, more sure. and more refined at that skill as you do it so yeah. you gotta teach someone that skill and then i feel like with human psychology like once someone finds out that you're making more money doing the same thing that they're doing they're not as motivated to do it as anymore so it's kind of like it's not their business either incentive. like you know like mm. i feel like i have the incentive as detail it's my business it's my name on the yep. cast yep. so yep. i'm building yep. it it's my organism i have to put my life into it but i just know that someone else i employ kind of will show that at the beginning but i've just seen it so much like people kind of start a job they're enthusiastic but as time goes you it's not their you business, know. bro. It's your business. It so they're, it's they're, it's I've, I've done the part. same, man. I've hired people and they were cool to begin with, but eventually yes. they just got lazy, man, because That's I was, it. I'm not a good boss. Like I'm just too chill. Yeah. And too, same, you know, same me yeah. here. And I, 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 and I'm the sort of person I realize that I'm not, I, I'm not, probably not the best boss. Like I'm, I don't want to be like responsible for all these people under me because it's already hard enough struggling. I'm like, I struggle to manage myself. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, one yeah, of those yeah, sorts of things. So, like, so, so you're thinking about you're thinking about that, like you're thinking about like, because yeah, yeah, like, that I'm, was I'm a hard learning easy. experience for me, man. Like spending so many years to build my business, and in the end, I couldn't sell it, man. Like, there was an offer on the table, and I couldn't do it, you know. So, so what? Uh, look, have you remained in the business, or what have you done? No, 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 no. Just, I just that's the thing. Like, I think when you can't get there, you just shut it down, and you you lose all opportunities. So, mm. you you know, like then, I couldn't. I couldn't sell it because I didn't want to be in it anymore. I wanted to get rid of it because I wanted mm. to do something else. Yeah, so, but then as, you, as we were saying, it's kind of like that business was you. So it's like once you sell yeah, it, you're I still could. there. Like you're still existing. So you know what I mean? And you've got to know that in your mind as well. So yeah, I couldn't sell yeah. it. So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things, man. It's like I've never been good at business. I think I've, I'm one of those people like you that like, we can have our successes because we're creative people and we mm. get really fucking good at what we do. Like the whole yeah. point, the whole point is to master something right in life. Yeah, so you get to a point where you fucking get good at something. You're like, Oh fuck, I'm better than heaps of people at this thing. Mm. I'm going to fucking help other people out. And then we start doing this shit. But then mm. it gets to a point where like, fuck, if you want to get into another hobby, it's almost like everything that you put into the last hobby, it can't live on because you That's only have it. so much fucking energy to give. So That's if you go, get, go into another hobby, I've got to put all my fucking eggs in this basket now. But it's like, mm. I'd love to be able to make money on the way out. Like, I, I would love to figure it out so that like, I don't have to leave that community. I don't have to yeah, leave. Yeah, the, yeah, I don't yeah. have to kill it. I don't want to mm. have to fucking kill it in order to move on. But I haven't but figured that like, shit out, man. But then it's like, a man only has so much energy. So it's like, if yeah. you don't leave There's, all that behind and you want to keep 
investing in that and investing in something into the future. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, like yeah, it's it's gonna be so diverted yeah. and like distracted, yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. even keep up with it. So you might not, you not, you might not be able to master the next master thing. that. So it's kind of like yeah. you've got to close one door and open the other door. But it's so hard when you've had that door open for so long. I, I mean, are you are you are you way. trying to figure that? Because you, you look pretty young, bro. Like I don't know how yeah. old, how old are you? I'm 27. Dude, like you're still teenage yeah. 20s. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. think you, you're getting to a point where like you're running a business where you're potentially getting this business out there, but at mm. some point you might want to move on and do something else. But then yeah, you, yeah. you could potentially sell your business too. But like, I, yeah, are you thinking about those kind of things? I, with this, the business selling thing, I think nowadays, I, I was, I, I've had some, a few ideas about this myself. Like I think mm. opening a business and owning a business has really changed its meaning now, especially with Facebook. Like now you can just open a Facebook business like that. And like, right. it kind of looks like, you can like have a, a website, Google. you can have a yeah, fucking Instagram, like, you can have man, a, you can go a phone Google number, you can have everything. My business. Yeah. You can start yeah. on my business and put your business on Google Maps. And to most people, that's like an official business. So like, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's not like all those blockades that were up before the starting a business aren't really there anymore. So you like, I, and I've noticed that, like, you just see a lot more people starting for businesses nowadays, like of all, mm. all, all different sorts, because it's easy to start. I mean, it doesn't mean that, that it doesn't mean that that person's going to commit because obviously you've got to have some persistence and passion. It's not but, like um, back in the day where you had to have a fucking bricks and mortar business. You had to sign yeah, up yeah, for like I a mean. fucking that's, year that's lease or for yeah. It's not like that it's anymore. Now. But then it's also yeah. like it also ties into like currency. Like I, I feel like the whole way the economy works is all changing now. Like even the way they're transitioned to cashless. Like that takes away so many industries from our country because Australia's. I feel like Australian like services industries built so much on cash. Like so many people do cash transactions and stuff that like once you trans once you transform that whole thing like it might even become like barter like we might all be like trading our services with one another with one another yeah. you know or yeah, you know yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like you might make me yeah. a logo and id tell your cut like and you know blah 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 stuff like that just, just but that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't help right like in the long run like you still need to fucking buy food and shit and you need to yeah yeah exactly right. you still need all the resources that you can't produce yourself which right. you have to purchase through some means of, you know, currency transactions. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, bro. Well, look, it's been a fucking good chat, man. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, there's so much more to it too because, like, I read all your profile. Like, you're into meditating and yoga and yeah, shit. So I, so, I know you're a spiritual dude as well. And I, I think well, that's I, a... I, I, I reckon we've got a lot of mutual interests. Eh? There's, we've only just, only just started to touch on some of the stuff. Totally, man. But I, I still think it comes across. Like, I think you know what i try to do with these podcasts is not so much have an agenda and have like bullet points or anything but it's like to try to find the soul of the person right so it, it's it's obvious if someone actually made it this far in the podcast and listened to everything you had to say they know that you're going to do a good job on their car like that's yes, the main no, thing right you, like, no, no, but that, no but that's that's obvious right it's obvious yeah. that you're not you're not out there to fucking rip people off like a, no, a no, car no. dealership might or like yeah. some other guys in detailing that might be just like trying to get good on working on your car for like cheaps. Cheap you know, and stuff like, like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think we touch on some topics that like, you know, some people that are on the fence might think a little bit differently after mm, listening mm. to this. They mm. might realize like, well, yeah, you get what you pay for, right? And it's like, 100%. Well, and I think that goes on in life. Like it's always, even though you think sometimes you can defeat that, like you can never defeat that. You always want to get what you pay for and that just, always balances itself out in the universe you know what i mean like it's just always alone yeah no i think i think that's the thing man like i think you know someone seeing hawkins video and then seeing you in it it's still almost a little bit unapproachable like mm. this is this is you in your home and this is you like talking openly and yeah, there's yeah, no exactly. fucking agenda so we we haven't got a script here or anything like that it's not fucking edited it's no, fucking unedited edited. it's fucking raw so i think um yeah if anyone's listening to this um and they need their car fucking detailed like i think they would know that at least if they spent their fucking hard-earned cash on you you'll do a good job and yeah, yeah. you're a good guy and you know you're not like trying to fucking rip anybody off and be in it like to make millions it's not about that right it's it's about no, it the passion it it's like you were always into cars from the fucking start and mm. you know like i think like the first time i reached out to you it was kind of like man i'd I'm cool with this podcast, but personally, I don't detail my car. And yeah, you know, I, 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 and and I've done the barter thing where like I've helped somebody out 
um, yeah, and getting them out of the community and they've done my car and I've done the really fucking, I did, did, I did the photos and I did the write-ups and I did the promotion, but, um, uh, as someone who doesn't detail their car, I know that detailing your car at least once a year, I don't know, you might say more than that because, mm. but I'm talking about a car that lives in my fucking garage. Right. So yeah. Oh, yeah. I still get it detailed once a year, but if I was driving my car every day, yeah, I'd probably say at least minimum twice a year. Twice a year. It, it would not fucking hurt. It would No, it doesn't hurt. hurt. It might yeah. hurt your wallet a little bit, but like mm. if this if this car is a keeper, if this car is like you love this car and you're gonna keep it, then hundred percent fucking yeah, for sure. get it for detailed. Sure. But um But as it is, it's just it just depends on that whoever it is, what their priorities are, what their car is. Like some people go through phases with just having a daily that they don't really care about and then they buy some of their life. Oh, totally. and they want to it. So it's just, yeah, totally. it's just one of those personal sort of things as well. So yeah, it's like, it's like personal grooming, haircuts. Dude, I was, about, I was about to say this whole detailing thing, like even after in the middle of our conversation, I was starting to think this is like totally like fucking skincare, man. It is, it's skincare. And like even the paint on your car is like skin. It's when you were form. talking about it, it was like, fuck, we, we are talking about like, Estee Lauder, fucking. <laughs> we are, we are, we are talking about high end, fucking high the, end the, shit, man. The, the diagrams with your fucking skin and your pores and shit. Yeah, and fucking... yeah, it is. It, it kind of is like that. It's weird because I've done this and like I thought, I told you, I, I, I thought I kind of even knew what I was doing when I started seven years ago. It's just like still learning, and it's, it's like it's like it's like dealing with an organism. Like it's every all of them respond differently, and like. Some some appreciate it and some don't, and you know that sort of thing. Oh, b- b- before before we wrap it up though, what about yeah. that um, what about that new tech with like you see all the American videos of like people getting like OptiCoat and all this fucking shit Australian done, stuff. and yeah. they're they're literally on YouTube like because you can't trust everything on YouTube obviously, no, yeah. right? Yeah. But they're they're pouring like fucking acid on their cars, they're fucking pouring fuel on their cars, and they're like, <laughs> they're, they're, they're they're pouring shit on the paint after it's been coated. And they're mm. saying it, it's fucking perfect. Like, uh, what's what's your opinion as a detailer? What I mean, they're they're pouring some nasty shit on their cars, and 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 apparently it's protecting their paint. So I think with cars, um, with detailing, a lot of it's hype. Like a lot of it's just like a really flashy presentation to make you look at it. Yeah. I've been like in the like in the industry for a few years, and I've like you know even before I started, I used to look stuff up. And the problem with detailing is that a lot of the big brands kind of build their reputation off. I don't, I don't want to say it. Like it's a big thing to say. But it's like don't mention the brands. Don't mention the brands. Yeah, but mention the brands, but, but like, these videos like, oh, yeah. where people are pouring like fucking turps and metal. Turps and stuff. Yeah. yeah. They're pouring um, that shit literally on the videos. They're like. Well, on the coatings shit. and stuff. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of those brands, like they, they kind of built on like hyping and scamming the consumer because like they kind of like over-exaggerate what the end result is, over-exaggerate what it can do, over-exaggerate the benefits to pull you in and to make you buy it and stuff. And then when you end up finding out that it's not as dramatic as they advertise it as, but you've already committed at that point anyway. So you've bought it. You already spent the money. Yeah, Yeah. you've spent the money and you've tried it out and it probably worked kind of as well as it doesn't and it doesn't, but oh well. Um, It's kind of all in the hands of the person who does it. Like you can have a detailer who can go to Super Cheap and buy all the crap stuff and still do a really good job because he just... He's thorough and he does the right job. He won't get as skills. good a result, but that result is kind of like diminishing returns. Like, doesn't mean that the more time you spend, the more better the result you get. Like, there's a, there's a grade to it, but um, mm. all that stuff, like all that fire and stuff, because what ceramic coatings are, it's like a very thin layer of glass on your paint. So a lot of them, like they'll layer petrol and stuff, because all those coatings, they're more temperature resistant, so they can resist like 600. 800 degrees so you put some like flammable liquid and you light it and it burns i guess on the paint and it, the clear coat itself doesn't burn right it's, so it yeah, is some sort of protection still it is some sort of yeah it's showing you that it's heat resistant i guess yeah. in a sense but like that that demonstration is just you know it's just an over-the-top demonstration to like make you look at it um do, do, but, do you also see like i remember uh when i was a, a really young kid like i remember it, uh, my family were in, in 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 the automotive industry, and they always were trying to create a paint that couldn't scratch and a paint that could heal itself and all heal that stuff. Itself. Like I think, yeah. So I think even even in the like sort of early two thousands, mid two thousands, even before that, man. Like I think there was always talk about like manufacturers releasing cars with paint that was 
next level pain like has that has that happened like because i i've had evos before and the paint's so fucking bad that but i get it because it's a lightweight car right it's like a race car it's like it's trying to make it lighter by like i'm a detailer i've done a lot of japanese cars for you all you need to know is that like mitsubishi mazda Mm. and subaru they kind of have like the worst paint out of all of (laughs) of them that's juicy shit man that's juicy yeah it is, no, no, it is. So, like, that's what that's just already something. You can, so, like, they kind of like their paints, you touch just it, thin. scratches, and you it cracks. It just, it scratches. You, like, you, you hit a, you hit a fucking, like, just your front bar is just eaten up with fucking what, stones. Like bites and dots yeah. and scratches yeah. and shit like that. Yeah. Like Evo, Evo 6, Evo 6, the whole front bar is like fucking dotted up like stuff. Yeah. Well, Evos, especially the older Evos, like Evos mm. 5, 6. I think like they didn't even put much of the money into the bodywork. Like you can right, see, like right. they kind of just like glued the guards on and like you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, the whole car, like yeah. other, other than the mechanicals on an Evo, it's all like a slap job, kind of like everything else. So, <laughs> yeah. So in that sense, like even the paint, like you got to imagine, like they're, they're not gonna be, oh, we're gonna like put this really amazing paint job on this slap. Right. Like, right, right. Even though, yeah, yeah, I always like Evo six is awesome. Like I'm, I'm not taking anything away. Oh from no, it. they're great cars, but the yeah, paint, paint paint's cars, fucking shit. Up, we all know. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and even in that, just like, yeah, there's just like, you know, like Mazdas, like you, you get older Mazdas from the 80s and early 90s, like the old MX5s, like the early NA6s in red and stuff like that. They have different yeah. paints on them. So, like, when you in the in the early 90s, mid 90s, they they kind of transitioned to like clear coat. So they had like the color under a clear coat. The clear coat itself is like what creates the gloss on the paint. Yeah. And that clear coat is like the thickness of cellophane wrapping paper. So. That's what like detailing mostly is. Like when you're detailing, that yeah, person is detailing really the clear at, coat. He's he's yeah. really good at refining that cellophane layer of clear coat on top of your paint. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. once and you, I'm sure you've seen a lot of cars on the road with like, it looks like there there's like peeling off paint, like yeah, like or, or like faded it, faded the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And like, Especially red cars. Stuff. Yeah. So that it's that that's the clear coat that's coming off, and that yeah. that's what I'm as a detailer really good at refining. Like I can make that transparent layer all over your car like really nice and glossy and then when you make that really nice and glossy the, that color underneath the clear coat looks really good so like, so uh, before we wrap up like as a detailer what car manufacturer out there seems to be on top of it in terms of paint, paint technology folks yeah like you said golfs golfs have really good paint Right. BMWs, not not the newer BMWs. Like as in, as in, are, they've got really good clear coats. You're saying, yeah, they've got really coats, thick they're, they're clear coats. Really like tough, resi- like you get. I get like, say like I'll get like an old old Golf GDI, like a Mark Six mm-hmm. GTD that's never been detailed, just thrash. It's red. It's got swirls, chips all over. If you give it a really good detail, it comes back to looking like not like new. If you look at it really close, but it looks really good again. Like. It really has yeah. that pop and stuff. So they've just got that. Um, they've, they've got better paint tech. Better than... paints. And like manufacturers have, after the 2000s, they kind of dropped off paint technology. So like 2010 onwards, they kind of went to like water. Instead of oil-based, they went to water-based. So paints are thinner. They use like different technology, technology to spray cars. So like cars are sprayed with static, not like hand spraying. So like they'd, they'd magnetize a car with static technology and then the paint would stick onto the car. And then, mm-hmm. like that, and that's all to reduce the runoff. Like when you paint a car, you end up wasting so much materials. They've had to like slowly make that more, you know, environmentally friendly to reduce. Oh, the, yeah, like okay, they, that shit. The right, are so, right, 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 so right. toxic and so the fumes are so bad. Like you need to, you need to register to have a spray booth in Sydney. Like you can't spray a car on the road because the, the yeah. fumes are so toxic from. Yeah, spray. yeah, fair call, so fair call. In that sense, like yeah, so it's just kind of like. Since they've had to make it more envir- environmentally friendly, it just that's when paint's degraded. But yeah, like Beamers, Mercs, Volks, typically Euro, Euro cars. Yeah, Euro, Euro cars. cars. I think you'll you find the odd, like even I find some new Camrys have new paint on them. A lot of new Mazdas have poor paint from the factory. It looks like a millimeter stuff something up. Like it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hit and miss nowadays. I don't think there's as, there's as much res- respect for paint as there used to be back in the days, but. Yeah. What's your what's your prediction then for like um, the future of? Well, you were talking about thing. You, you're talking about a paint that's next level. Have you ever heard yeah. of paint protection film by chance? No, no, no. So no. PPF is like the next generation in detailing. So okay. that's when they put a clear vinyl on top of your paintwork. Okay. So yeah, so it literally looks that like, makes that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So and but that's a lot more expensive. So people with like Lambos, McLarens, luxury cars do it. So say. 
you don't want any stone chips on your front bumper. So you get this PPF film, they wrap it all over your front bar. They really like, even if they get a few bubbles and stuff, you can't really see it because it's clear. Yeah. Um, and it literally like stops chips, stops scratches. And if you run a heat gun over it, the heat gun will heal that film back and you can get real scratches and stuff like that. So I've always thought of like wrap as like you wrap a car to protect the paint of the car when you first buy a brand new car. Right? So I've, I've known guys that have bought luxury cars and then they fucking get it wrapped Wraps to protect the paint. Yeah. But then like the minute they fucking sell the car is when they take the paint off, the wrap off. And then the next owner gets to enjoy a brand new car. Brand new it's, a, it's just like, man, like the enjoyment really, is for the next fucking guy. It's just it's like, a it's a yeah i've always thought of it as weird man it's like i go into a dealership if i go buy a brand new car it's because i get to choose the fucking color like that's color the, yeah 100%. that is the thing for me it's kind of like mm. man i get to fucking choose what color it is so color trim I, yeah. options all those little things i, I don't I'm, know but so, so you don't see anything in the way of like future paint, future technolo- stuff, um, paint technology like I, I, with I, manufacturers I, I, and shit have you noticed that more cars are like coming out with like black roof yeah, like there's sure. more cars with like they, you know, so they're making like a uni body like black roof black pillars they're starting yep. to introduce more plastics on cars like i've noticed that they're starting to introduce like they got less rid of paint yeah less paint. Less paint on cars. so now they have like lots of hyundai's and lexus have the whole plastic guards and plastic skirts and stuff which isn't good because plastic people don't people already know look after the cars over here and plastic has oils in it so because our environment's so harsh the so, um, the sun basically dries out the oils so you yeah. see all those older cars of the plastic that go so you know they go all white and pasty yeah and I know. it just looks horrible because the plastic the plastic's look bad on it but um yeah I, I, like i think maybe they're going to go to like different i've noticed like more the colors are getting more bright now like more popping sort of colors mm. um I don't know. Like, I, 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 I've not heard anything in terms of like paint them changing. Like, you know, I've never heard of even like them doing wrapping from factory. You know, you know what I mean? Like, instead of you getting a car that's painted, you can get even, a wrap. Of yeah, I like the idea of the clear wrap. But I, I, I think like when I was listening to it as I was a kid, as I was, as I was uh, young, it was like people were saying that you could scratch a, scratch a red car and then it won't show the metal. It'll still be red. Like, I You'll think that's what they were trying to do. I think that's what they were trying to do years ago, but I don't know. If... Yeah, when you were a kid, yeah. So that, that's what we were talking about before. Like, when you were a kid, cars mm-hmm. used to be all, like, um, it's called, like, one-stage paint. So, like, literally the, the gloss and the paint was in one layer. So you nice. literally scratch a car and then you go back to the middle because it was literally one layer. But now, in, like, the 90s and 2000s, they trend, they they upgraded to like base coat with clear coat. So like you got yeah, the color so, coat and the clear yeah. coat. So you'd scratch the clear coat and you'd end up with the color. But if you scratch it deep enough, you'd end up with the middle. So yeah, that's sure, kind of like where they're... It's, and it's kind of like, yeah, it, going, yeah, as you can see now, I, I think like people don't care. Like cars are not as popular as they used to be. Like even now, like people, there's less people learning to drive, less people driving around. Fuck, it's I haven't even looked into that. That's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if it, but I, I, then I, I read something today, like because of, of Uber, probably Uber. Everyone's Ubering yeah, everywhere. But now because of COVID, more people have started to buy cars because people have realized that the car gives you your ability to drive around. So because of COVID, the whole used car market's increasing price, and all this other stuff's happening in the car market. That's totally different stuff to like you know normal demand supply factors. So. Dude, really? I bought a I bought a Honda Jazz like as a daily driver like maybe two years ago now, and I haven't washed it once <laughs> since since buying it two years ago. I haven't washed it once, and I live by the beach, so it's covered in fucking yeah. salt. And I, I literally have to go out there and like have a wet towel and wipe down my um two, two windows and yeah. and <laughs> and mirrors uh, with the windscreen i just use the fucking whatever the cars the, wipers, got, right? the, jet, the wipers but um <laughs> i have to wipe it down every time and it's like i'm pretty sure my paint will be fucked eh? like yeah oh no it won't, it won't be stuffed but that's what i mean like oh, oh it's like, covered oh, in what? so much it's so thick the dirt it's like yeah, it's the dirt. covered it's so, but i don't know if it's fucked or not like i don't know if it's fucked or not well know? all that stuff is basically like it's kind of like yeah what you know how you were saying before you, you um it's like skincare so think of yeah. your paint as like skin and like you got all this dirt sitting on the skin of your paint so i still that have dirt, the clear coat under there somewhere yeah yeah. so the clear coat is there and all that stuff all that dirt is like slowly working itself into the pores yeah of your paint. that's what i thought so, yeah, so and then once it gets into the pores and it starts eating away at the pores and at the clear coat, and then eventually you end up with that paint starting to go like really dry, sort of flaky look. 
and then it starts to lift. But it will happen slowly. So you will be like, oh, it doesn't look that good. And then and it's all relative. So you just go, oh, it's going to be worse, hey? It's going to be worse. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, it's the paint's not there anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I just don't. I just don't ever want to wash it, man. Like I, my dream yeah, I is mean, to own a, you know, R thirty five GTR and just never wash it. Like I just think. That wow, we, that's gonna yeah. make me so sad, man. That's gonna make. Me but it just be sick. Like it's that car that's like parked <laughs> in the city, and you look at it, it's like fuck that GTR I'm, is trash. And I'm like, yeah, you that's do, my you car. You do see a few. There are trash black thirty fives out there. I have yeah, black. Before. Yeah, black. Yeah, when they're black, I, yeah. you see a few of them trash. Like they just look gross. Like oh, black wheels that are dirty, and the whole car's black, and everything's just dude, like. Dude, dude, dude! I owned a black car once, and then like just got, just it's just so hard to keep it clean. And then you I said I would, I would right. never own another one again. And then I Lord bought another great. one. But they, they, they look so good when they're clean, <laughs> though. That's the thing. When you actually get them cleaned. Professionally, it looks so good. Oh, you can't look stop so looking good. at it, man. Yeah, but you, it, it, you, yeah, it's so good. It, and sunset and shit. When you when you, when the sun's going down and you're looking at your black car that's been detailed. Oh my god. Because um, a black car is pretty much like a blank canvas. Like it's beautiful. When when a, when a black car is like properly detailed, it's pretty much like reflecting anything that it's around. So it just beautiful. becomes like this, like. Um, like you know, all the curves and stuff, you can see all the different reflections. Yeah, you see stuff, curves so. that you didn't even know. Yeah, yeah, you didn't even see the other curves, and the curves look way nicer and more bulging and stuff like that. So, like on the 32 GDR, when you, when you do the rear guards properly, like the, the car just looks wider and more tough as well. So, it's those sorts of little things. Yeah, for sure. Well, mm. oh, no, thanks for your time, man. It was, um, no, thank you. No worries. Yeah, it's well, good that up. we made it happen. Um, hang on the line. I'm just going to wrap it up. Um, guys, I'm going to leave Ornob's uh, links and everything to his social media and stuff in the description below. So um, definitely check him out. And if you guys need a detail on your car, check him out. And also check out all of his um, stuff on Hawkins Supra as well. You guys have probably even seen that. But um, yeah, Ornob, hang on the line. Thanks for your time, bro. Man, thank, thank you, Justin. I appreciate it. All right, dude.